Right, there's no doubt about it, the biggest edge in carp fishing is having a sharp hook. Now straight out of the pack, hooks are sharp, but they can be far, far sharper. We're here with Jason Hayward, who's been sharpening hooks for 30 years now. Big difference to you, mate, isn't it? Yeah, it makes a massive difference, Joe. Absolutely massive difference. The people say, you know, they buy a packet of hooks and ten, they buy ten hooks and six are sharp and four and they throw them away, etc. Well, when I buy a packet of hooks, any hook, it doesn't matter what they are, I don't care how sharp they are to begin with because I'm going to make them far sharper than they will be originally. And that, I say that's all hooks across the brands. There's no, there's no discrimination here that you, know, you can make a hook far sharper than it already is. So whatever hook you're happy with can be done with. Yeah, yeah the, I mean, this is my pattern of choice, the Dren and Conti. It's good, it's reliable, and it sharpens up incredibly well and it's very strong. It just ticked all the boxes for me. Cool. Right, what we've basically got with this hook is the wire, just to show you a big diagram here, is, is round like that, okay? And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this side off, we're gonna take this side off, which is the two sides of the hook, and then we're gonna take the top off, just to sharpen it down. Okay, okay? so this is the side of the barb on. Yeah, exactly, you don't touch the, the inside of the hook, you don't touch it, okay? Now, the tools we're gonna use, the jag tools, they've all been specifically made for the job, they're not tools that we've bought off the shelf or anything like that. These are tools that we've designed specifically to sharpen carp hooks, basically, okay? Now, th this is the vise. A lot of people have said it's just a vise, it's no different, etc. It, it is, it's massively different. Um, you've got a really big flat edge here, which when I come around to showing you, makes a massive difference. Depending on the size of the hook, place your hook, tighten it up nicely, it won't damage it, about that high. Now, this is the file we use. It's been made for us by a world-leading Swiss um, tool manufacturer. Um, it's got the, way, the, the, the cut is unique to ours as well. We've had the cut made to us, and we've had it made with this um, soft rounded edges, because most files that you buy have a cutting edge on the side. So when you're, if you use, are using a, a file with a cutting edge, when you'd be rubbing it along here, you'd be rubbing along, at, you know, you'd be taking chunks out of your vice, like, you know. Right. So basically, to achieve what we want to achieve, we're going to take this, this is your first edge, okay, now this is uh, on the side, so we're, ho we're holding it very steady in our hand, we don't move the vice, we only move the file. Now, th this file, it only cuts in a forward direction, okay. So if, if you're doing this, you're cutting, you're sharpening, blunting, sharpening, blunting, so only cut forward, it only cuts on the forward stroke, okay. Right. Now, we want to be, we want to be cutting from the barb up to the point. There's no point at all in removing any more metal from below the barb because that's once it's past the barb, it's in, etc., etc. So you just want to be doing it from the barb upwards. So we place this rounded edge of the file onto the vise, and from the barb upwards, we just use this motion. It only takes off a tiny, tiny bit of metal. You put much pressure on it? No, it's not, not really, mate. You let, let the file do the work. Now, depending on the, uh, the type of hook, the uh, type of the brand of the hook, etc., cetera, um, that defines how many, how many strokes you do. Do about half a dozen like that. We've now taken this edge off here, okay? So what was round has now got a flat edge on it, okay? okay? So now we're gonna do the other side. Now, you don't want to be working that way. Now, naturally, you'd want to do it that way, but you're working against the point, right. okay? So you're actually going to be blunting it, okay? So what we do is we we'll hold the vise upright like that, okay? Again, putting this rounded edge onto the vise, using it as our guideline, and we look down, okay? And just look down along the point. Just check it. If you need to use the eyeglass, you can just check to see what you're doing. Because, and because you're removing the coating, you can see it's actually showing you where you're filing away, okay? So I'm looking down there. Again, about half a dozen. You can see, you can see the tiny amount of metal I'm taking off there, just the coating. Okay, so now we've taken off this side as well, okay? So now we're going to do this side and we're going to actually take the top off, okay? 
So again, from about the barb going down forward, this is a, a beat point, okay? So just have to uh, follow that, keeping the file nice and flat. Keep checking it. Check it on your finger. Just a little bit more at the top there. Basically, we, we started off with a round and it's gone to a square, okay? Now, the, these edges here, we just want to clip them off at sort of 45 degrees, okay? So basically, you just hold it. Again, using the file exactly the same way. Just, just take them. It just takes it back down and just refines it. Okay, now that already you can see that's far, far sharper. Huge difference. Than, yeah. a huge difference as well. Now you can also take that a step further. Um, with the stones, you've got the red one that's medium and these ones are fine. Th these are um, a cutting stone. So they, they don't take off anywhere near as much metal as these. But you can just take it that tiny bit further down. So again, using these in exactly the same way, the finish you get if you, if you use these is far superior as well. It's just... Uh, Polishing it off. <laughs> exactly. It's like you know, using a file and then using a little bit of sandpaper just to take it down, smooth it. Obviously, this is a file. It's made of high-speed steel. You have to look after it. It comes supplied in a tube. But look after it, keep it in the tube. It's not a problem. These are, because they're stones, they're very brittle. I could snap them in my hands, okay? So when we designed the vice, we designed it with that in mind that you can pop them inside. That's a good idea. Exactly, you might as well make use of it, okay? It, it's something you need to practice. Just like you practice time rigs, just like you practice casting. It's not going to come straight away. You, I won't lie to you, you if you haven't done this sort of thing before, you probably will you know, muck up a load of hooks. But as you can see, the difference between what it was to start with and the difference what it is now is, is so much sharper. You know, can't have very fleshy mouths and it only takes that tiny, tiny edge to you know, prick the carp and you know, it's the difference between getting a take or not. And I know lots and lots of people that have, have started doing this and suddenly you know, they start catching more. Get more you know, bites, yeah. It's just as simple as that. It, it, you know, if you buy a packet of hooks and one was more, you know, was far sharper than the other one, you'd put that one on, wouldn't yeah. you? you know? Well, this, you're doing everything much, much sharper. You know, the method I use and this method, it does, when you catch a fish, whether it be a tench or a carp, etc., you, you do find that that point will have gone over, okay? Snapped off or bent over, okay? It's a hook, mate. You take it out, you take it home, you throw it away. You know, it's not something you should be worrying about. A hook, you know, is 20, 30 pence. Do you know what I mean? But it's the difference between getting a run or not, okay? Just quickly, I've noticed obviously the coating of hooks come off there. Yeah. Is, that, is that a problem at all? Uh, well, a, a lot of people do worry about it. Um, Strangely enough, it varies from water to water. Some waters you can cast out and you bring it back in in the morning and it's, it's almost fine. Some waters you come back on and it's, you know, it's brown and you know, it's rusted. You know. People worry a little bit too much because it's rust, but the amount, of, um, the amount of penetration that that rust has gone into overnight or 18 hours in the water is virtually nothing. You, you can... Um, I always carry a little bit of Vaseline with me, you know, so you know you can just just dip it in and just touch it and more often than not that that is enough it's going to make no difference at all you know to, to, your, to your bait or the sharpness of the hook it doesn't impede the hook in any way like you know um, so if you want to do that you know yes you are taking the coating off the hook but it, it, the hook is now far superior to what it ever was before so I just think we get done so many times, don't we? And you know, they'd feel that little bit of a hook there, and it gets blown out. But with the hooks being that sharp, they don't even get the chance to sort of feel that little no, bit of hook definitely. there, do they? Because it just slips straight and in. And there's also the advantage that um, you know, if you're using a people say, oh, well, you have to use a five ounce lead to get a take. Well, obviously these are far sharper, so you can get away with smaller leads, you know, stuff like that. Is it, it, it? You know, it's just a massive, massive edge. You know. Right. Well. I'm off home to practice. Yeah, mate, yeah, keep at it, mate. <laughs>